What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. This time, this is just uh, pretty much uh, me showing you guys my whole like uh, modeling setup, I guess. Um, so I've had a lot of like new subscribers ask me how I do my modeling, and um, a bunch of them don't go back and look at my other tutorials, I have three on it. But then I kind of started thinking, I was like, eh, they're kind of outdated, so I'll just make a new one that kind of sums them all up. Um, but uh, this is still not going to show you how to model exactly like me because I mean I got to kind of keep some stuff secret because I mean don't want everyone do exactly what I do kind of ruins everything for me and all my hard work but um, so I'm just going to show you uh, my materials here um, this purple material which I use for colors a lot now is uh, a space material in uh, vipers um, material pack era viper uh, you, it's spelled V Y P R um, if you just YouTube search era viper and go to his channel I believe he has it on the links to the side of his channel um, or I guess going to the new layout soon so you'll have to go to about and then it'll be somewhere in his links there but you can download that material pack and there's this purple one all I did was uh, lower the glow um, to inner 17 outer 41 so if you want that and the other one is um, micro eats poop or hay or oh, this is micro eats hay uh, the green material in droids 2.0 and then my color or my gray material is just this uh, black material from droids 2.0 it's called matte 4 um, so yeah those are the materials um, so pretty much I'm gonna show you guys what I do with logos and whatnot, and um, this is varied from my last tutorials. Um, I usually vary it from background to background, really depending on the logo and stuff like that. Like if you guys saw my vicey background, I kind of modeled some stuff around the logo, and not really the logo itself. But I'm gonna just do this with the phase logo real quick, cause phase is pretty cool. And uh, so, just pretty much what you're gonna want to do is get your extrude nerve. Uh, put your AIs in it, however many there may be. I like to roll about 80 depth. Uh, you can adjust this depending on your Lightroom and all that good stuff, but uh, I like to roll 80. And then uh, do fillet caps, and I like to go with uh, one radius. Um, so once you do that part, you're going to want to duplicate uh, the extrude nerves and just put one in a folder and just uh, hide it. Uh, by making both the little circles red and um, that way if you mess up you have an extra uh, extrude nerves that you can play with and um, if you want to do something with like Reaper X or something which I occasionally do uh, you can pull out the AI right there and it'll match up good with your logo um, so once you do that um, depending on how many extrude nerves you have you want to select them all right click select children right click make edible right click select children and right click and connect objects into little crap right click and connect objects objects and delete uh, so pretty much you just get a null right here uh, then you're going to want to select the uh, you're, you want to choose a selection tool and then click the um, s uh, the cube with the like one square shaded in and just select the face of your logo and then you're going to want to right click and go to knife and pretty much now you're gonna you can draw lines to separate your logo, and this can this will allow you to like extrude parts in and all that stuff which you see me do a lot. So I'm just gonna select some points here that I feel will work. All right, um, maybe. Mm. So yeah, okay, that works. And then um, I'm just going to select different points. It, some of them, all right, it doesn't work with that one. But uh, usually, if it, if you can extrude it inwards really far and there's no problems, uh, you uh, what I usually do is go in a little bit, extrude it down a little bit, or extrude it in a little bit, uh, then go inwards again, and then extrude it in. So you kind of have like a double bevel thing here, which is pretty cool. But I think this will be weird. No, nope, that one works fine. That one works fine. 
All right, this one, as you can see, like the edge right there, right here, kind of gets screwed up. So for those, you kind of want to just extrude in as far as you can, and then just go in a little bit. And then you don't want to put any like pipes or anything there. You could put like gears maybe, or just some modeled um, cylinders or something. I don't know. But uh, what I before I didn't extrude some parts in, but now I pretty much extrude it all in, just to give it kind of a cooler effect. And yeah, so I'm just gonna do this, play around. And uh, as you're doing this, you kind of want to get an idea of what you're gonna put in the logo, where things are gonna start going. And uh, you kind of want to have a plan beforehand. But I mean, you can just do this and then decide later on. It doesn't really matter. It, it's all personal preference. Um, put some gears in there, so that'll work. All right. So there we go. We got everything I want beveled. So now I'm just gonna add my material. So there we go. Kind of dark. Um, then uh, what I like to do is with that extra extruder we have, I'm just gonna duplicate that out of there. I'm going to put this in an atom array, so uh, later on, uh, when you put this in Photoshop, you can kind of see the edge better. And I'm just going to add my colored material there. And uh, you, as you can see, you can't really see it very well, so I'm just going to bring it out a little bit. There, there we go. And uh, in my Lightroom, I have some pre-made pipes and cylinders and things like that as you can see here so um, not really going to show you how to model pipes you can watch my other tutorials for that uh, but um, pretty much I just use the same pipe uh, I occasionally model a new one I, I model new um, uh, tubes and um, oil tanks every time usually but for the sake of time I'm just going to use the ones that are in here but uh, see once you get to this stage you have to pretty much get your plan where you want things to go so right here I'm thinking I'm gonna put a, like a pipe so I'm gonna go into front view and I'm gonna go and get my bezier tool or however you say it I don't even know uh, and I'm just gonna make a line right here get nice and straight and go back to the normal view and I'm just gonna Duplicate. Ah, which one do I want? I want this one. By hmm, what? Is there two connected in a one? What? Oh, that's weird. Okay. All right. So uh, then you're gonna want to get us here. I just. All right. So uh, once you have your model uh, pipe or whatever you're gonna put in. Uh, you're going to want to use the uh, spline wrap tool or spline wrap effect. I don't even know what it's called. And you just want to drag it on to your modeled object, which you're going to make a null like we did with the logo. So you're just going to right click, select children, make edible, and uh, all that stuff. Then you're going to want to go to your spline wrap and uh, put it on plus Y on the axis. Uh, then click this arrow, to arrow tool and select your spline. And uh, gonna go to spline and put it on uniform. And for some reason, this got screwed up. Let me just. Wow, that's weird. I don't know why that's doing that. Just delete that quick. I'm gonna go back to when the old. All right, maybe this will help. Yeah, there we go. All right, so plus Y, and then make sure your spline is on uniform, and uh, you don't notice it here because it's straight. But when you have like curved uh, parts, like if I were to have the pipe going from here and then down, uh, it would look really weird on like none uh, or adaptive. So you want to put on natural or uniform, depending on how it goes. And then uh, the spline kind of sticks out a bit. It's not really in the logo. So I'm going to just drag the spline back so it's inside the logo. And there we go. Got a nice pipe in there. And I'm going to drag it back a little further. Actually. All right, there we go. Perfect. 
so um yeah that's pretty much that um then got an idea and I want to put my little uh, ladder looking thing oh crap and my ladder looking thing right in this area so I'm gonna go back to the front view back to the uh, bezier uh, I actually have no idea how to say that it's really annoying and I'm just gonna make the uh, spline right here alright golden um, then I'm gonna duplicate that out of here actually that yeah that's what it was all right all right um so i already have my pre spline wrap in here and it's just the same as last time put it in there all swagadociously and uh, is that it i'm going to make this bigger so like that and then, as you can see right here, it gets a little weird. Um, that's uh, from the adaptive, so you're just going to put on uniform. And I believe with this looking thing, it's still, yeah, it's still weird. Um, try natural. There we go. And it looks much better. And I'm just going to do some of my own adjustments here. And there we go. Uh, you can't really see it because of black on black, but... Uh, and another thing is, if you have like the color, like the same color uh, logo as you do as like an object, you can't really see it. I uh, just want to duplicate uh, whatever the color is and uh, kind of make it brighter. I do this for gears usually because gears you can't really see with, or f for me some reason you can't really see my gears. So I like to put a, like a lighter material on them. I believe it was that right. No. Um, where is this? There we go. So now you can kind of see it a bit better. And um, all right. So next, I'm gonna add some uh, little modeled oil tank tanker thingers there. Um, so I have my pre-made thing right here, and pretty much this is like it's kind of like doing gears, I guess. Uh, you kind of just put them in, like in gears. I like to put like inside, like beveled part. Uh, these sphere models and oil tank models, I just like to put kind of on the outside because they kind of stand out. And it's cool to put like little tiny flares on them. Makes it look cool. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just what I do. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird to explain, I guess, because I do it and it's so like natural to me. It's kind of weird just saying it, but yeah. So I'll kind of just make this even, something like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's pretty dope. All right. Um, and the next part, uh, which everyone always asks how to make gears and stuff, it's pretty simple. You just get the cog wheel thing there, and add extrude nerves, and then just kind of make it smaller. And that's how simple it is. Um, yeah. People always ask me how to make gears, and it's really annoying because it's really simple. And it's right there for you in Cinema 4D, and they don't even know. Uh, but I was there too once, and so I kind of understand. But then again, that was two years ago. So, but yeah, okay, whatever. No hate. Um, <laughs> So gears, pretty much, uh, you just kind of want to get like a decently sized one that takes up a lot of space, and just kind of put it throughout the space you are wanting to put the gears. So I'm gonna do this. All right, uh, and then uh, as you can see, this there's no really no room anymore for them. So I'm just gonna make the uh, spline smaller in the extrude nerve. Just kind of put it. And uh, I always have them touching, so it looks kind of, kind of realistic. Um, that's just me. You can uh, like put them in wherever and tilt them and cool stuff like that. That looks pretty dope. And uh, if you're if you kind of play around with it, why not? But yeah, I'm kind of liking this. Put this one. 
And another cool thing you can do is uh, you can have just all of them the same size and just put some behind, like some like this, like that's pretty cool. I don't really do that though because I, I, I saw someone else do that so I was just like no I'm not going to do that, that's their thing. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is pretty much more what I like to do. And then you get some nice gears there. And um, if you if you have like multiple things like this, and as well as as the spheres, if I put more there, I just like to select them all and just group them in a folder. Just name them some like gears. I don't even know if that's spelled right. And oh, I guess the technical term is cogs. That's one G. I'm such a bad speller. All right. Um, and the last thing I usually add is uh, some like with Reaper X like like look like wires and stuff so I'm just gonna get a nice bezier just make another line here alright that's swag um, just get my Reaper X and people always ask me how I do this uh, they've always asked me for like a while now um, I always get so many questions about modeling I don't know why well probably because I do it that's most likely the most logical reason why but um, it's pretty simple you just put in Reaper X and just decrease the coils and it's pretty much those are pretty good looking wires if I do say so myself and you can just mess with the settings like the distance have them more spread apart and you can just duplicate them make this one like smaller maybe decrease the coils a bit there you go some nice wires and you just add the color uh, other th what else? Uh, the other thing I like to do with like these wire things is uh, I just duplicate it, uh, go to the settings, uh, make the radius kind of small, kind of put the coils up more. Yeah, I don't, no, not that much. Put the distance up and add some color just so there's some color in the wire area. So yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. And then um, if your thing looks too simple, like this looks pretty plain, you can add like different stuff. Just like you can model like these spheres and whatnot around the logo. For square logos like this, I like to add like bars or something. So I just get like a cylinder, put it like right there, and maybe make make the uh, radius about two and three. A little too tall, one fitting me. It might be too small. That's pretty good. Alright, and then uh, this really could be any color. You can make it colored if you want. Uh, this space material, when you color stuff like that, though, half of it's darker and half, the, half of it is lighter. So I, I usually stay away from that because it kind of looks weird on the background then which you can see on some of my backgrounds yeah you can pick that up and it really bothers me but like I don't know I should probably just change it around sometime maybe use a different material but hey it's working for me now so I'm gonna keep doing it and uh, I don't really like that move it in a bit pretty cool and let's see oh 18 minutes damn alright so that's pretty much it that's the gist um, I didn't really think this was going on that long that's pretty freaking long I just I just rant for 20 minutes um, so or until 20 uh, that's pretty much it you can get really creative with the modeling and stuff I know I didn't show you how to model the pipes it's pretty easy you just get a cylinder or you get a yeah you got a cylinder make it thin Extrude some of it, put some color on some of it, and that's pretty much it. No, add some bevel. And, uh, yeah, so, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys want to see another one of these, uh, with, like, how to model different things that I model in my backgrounds, just let me know. I know I got some suggestions on how to do, like, the half nitro blasted text. If you guys want to see that, leave a comment. Leave a comment on what you want to see next, tour tutorial-wise. Uh, make sure you subscribe and like, uh, if this doesn't get that many likes I probably won't do another tutorial for a while but 
Yeah, so 20 minutes. Uh, thanks, bye.